بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بناء على طلب المنظمين سأتحدث باللغة الإنجليزية للتواصل مع جمهورنا الدولي في هذا المؤتمر Good morning, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen It's an absolute pleasure and honor to be here with all of you here today to speak about this very important subject matter which is the advent of one of the most important technologies that is reshaping the world as we know it, whether it's civilian or military, and that is unmanned systems. I'd like to start by setting the context about the place that we are all hosted in today and the country that is hosting this important conference. 50 years ago, the UAE was a startup nation. We had daily challenges of providing the necessary infrastructure for decent human life, whether it's running water, electricity, or even transportation. We have, over the last 50 years, proven that not only can we provide these necessities, but become one of the most advanced and secure nations in the world. That is an achievement that we were able to achieve because of the careful planning the deliberation and the cooperation that we have had with people from around the world and nations that are like-minded with the UAE. This momentum is not going to stop. And this conference that we are here today at proves that the UAE's ambition is to constantly reinvent itself and to constantly invest in the future to ensure that we are at the cutting edge and we are moving the envelope when it comes to advanced technology. I'd like to set the context with talking about not just the future, but today, the current. Unmanned systems today are reshaping surveillance, are reshaping combat and defense. And they are technologies that are reshaping the civilian sphere with unmanned cars and unmanned logistical vehicles, uh, reshaping procurement, reshaping supply chains and systems that are changing the way that we think of warfare, that we think of defense, and that we think of vulnerabilities. Today, more than ever, we understand the importance of safeguarding our nations by ensuring that these technologies are tools that we can use rather than tools that can be used against us. But as with all tools throughout history and with all technologies that have been advanced, we realize as well that they are not perfect and they are not a silver bullet. There are certain opportunities that come with deploying unmanned uh, systems and there are certain challenges as well. So before moving to our next panel, I'd like to share some thoughts on four opportunities and four challenges when it comes to unmanned systems that we need to think about when planning for the future. Let's start with the opportunities. When thinking about unmanned systems, we know that they provide a lot of opportunities in ensuring that human life is safeguarded from the battlefield. And that is one of the advantages that today push for decision makers to deploy these systems. That is something that we need to take at heart because each and every single human life is very valuable for every nation in the world. The second is the fact that these systems can coordinate and can work cohesively in ways that even the best teams of humans can't. Because algorithms, unlike humans, don't have emotions. Algorithms don't show fear, and algorithms do what they're told. That advantage allows for us to deploy these systems in ways that ensure that the result is going to be met in most cases. The third opportunity is the fact that these systems don't get tired. These systems don't need toilet breaks. These systems don't need to go to sleep. And as we push some of the variables necessary to keep these systems on the battleground or in the air, we are able to deploy them 24 hours, 365 days of the year. These capabilities are very beneficial for surveillance, for reconnaissance, and even in the battlefield. They ensure that we have a competitive edge. And then the final advantage is the fact that these systems, when deployed against conventional systems and when infused with artificial intelligence, can take decisions that are really very different to the decisions that we have today. 
And if we def deploy them in ways that we're seeing right now, like for example, swarm robotics and swarm systems, we're able to deploy maneuvers that we've never been able to deploy before and deploy them in ways that give us a strategic advantage on the battlefield and a strategic advantage in defending ourselves. All of these advantages at times make us feel like these systems are impenetrable and are perfect, but they are far from it. So I'd like to add four challenges that we need to think about when planning to deploy these systems. The first challenge is unmanned systems today give us the urge to increase escalation, especially when we deploy it with artificial intelligence. These systems are systems that make us feel that since there are no humans in the battleground, we can continuously escalate and continuously push things aggressively forward without thinking of the repercussions. If we add artificial intelligence to the mix, at most of the times, and in most cases, the AI systems are going to push for escalation because they only think of certain variables. They think of variables of what are the strengths and weaknesses and where can I win? They do not think in an emotional sense of what, would, what, what it would mean for the destruction of nature and the destruction of human life. The second disadvantage or challenge that His Excellency Minister al Bawardi mentioned in his speech is the fact that these systems are becoming much more cheaper and accessible than ever before. And that accessibility is allowing these systems to get into the hands of the people that we don't want them to get into the hands of. Terrorist groups that use these systems to terrorize civilians and to impact the global system in a negative way. That is a challenge that requires us to come hand in hand and to work together to ensure that we can create a shield against the use of these systems in these environments. The third, the third challenge is the fact that these systems, when deployed with artificial intelligence, have one big disadvantage that have been apparent in many other sectors, which is the fact that they use historical data to plan for the future. As we've seen in 2010, in the flash crash of the stock market, the main fundamental reason of that crash was that the systems, the artificial intelligence systems, did not understand what was happening. And all of them coordinated together a sell-off that led to a sudden crash in the stock market. This can also be apparent if we deploy all these systems in the battlefield. Because of the necessity to train them using historical data, we will find ourselves seeing these systems take decisions that we don't understand based on fundamentals and variables that might be historic and not present on the battlefield at that given situation. So we need to constantly keep a human in the loop to ensure that these decisions are decisions that make sense for us when planning to move forward. The final challenge is that we are moving into a world of haves and have nots. And that world is going to create a discrepancy that might lead to people going to extremes to ensure that they still are relevant in the battlefield and they are relevant. That also proves that we will reach a point where we'll have a challenge keeping the humans that we have today in our militaries, in our defensive agencies, engaged. Because as they see, they see these systems being deployed more and more, they understand that they will be replaced by these machines and there will be a need for them to reskill and retool themselves. All of these challenges need to be addressed not by one country or one individual organization, but by all of us together. We need to understand that this technology is not perfect, but we need it today more than ever. And that if we do not deploy it in the best way possible, we will become redundant. I hope that the coming sessions shed light on these topics. And I also hope that the success of this conference can be seen in your countries and your organizations and that we will be able to safeguard this world and create a better future by the efforts of the panelists and individuals in this room. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you in the near future. Thank you.